Hi friends, in this video we will be doing uh, SQL injection blind and uh, we will be doing it at uh, medium level. So basically this level is quite difficult and uh, unlike uh, normal SQL injection we won't be able to have uh, uh, error messages from the database and that will make it quite difficult to jump the database and uh, if we do anything wrong we won't be able to figure it out uh, in a go what's going wrong and it will take some time to figure it out so it's quite frustrating and uh, i'll suggest you to just try harder for this and uh, if you are not getting something uh, look at what's going wrong and uh, where you might be wrong so so let's so let's start so unlike uh, uh, our uh, standard sql injection um, here the payloads won't work so if we use some um, standard payloads code single code uh, we are not going to have anything or if we use this again we do not have anything so our uh, normal payloads are actually not working and uh, we are not able to figure it out if uh, the uh, there is a SQL injection present in it or not so what we can try is uh, um, we can actually try something called subselects so basically what a subselect is uh, we have uh, SQL queries embedded inside another SQL query big SQL query that means uh, we have some uh, SQL query like select uh, a from some table t where something p equal to and then we can have uh, another subselect here actually so we can have another query inside this query select select one from some table q and in this way uh, we can actually nest sql queries one inside another and what uh, how this query will be evaluated is it's gonna first uh, evaluate this uh, internal query and this is called subselect so this will first uh, this will first let's say so this will first select a column call from this uh, table row so yeah. this query is first gonna be evaluated and uh, it will uh, select the column call from this row and uh, here we will have a, a, a set of uh, here we will have a set of records which will be um, outputted by the query evaluated so let's say um, it returns f g h j something so So we will be having uh, the value substituted here. Now the outermost uh, select query will be executed, and if you won't get it, uh, will you'll get it uh, soon. So here, what I will try to do is select a single constant one and check if we get the output and we get it and we get the first name and uh, surname corresponding to the user id 1 so if i put in 1 and check we get the same results so what might be happening uh, behind the scene is uh, it's uh, the application is uh, getting this id from us uh, and having it in some variable id say now the application is using a uh, sql query something like this select first name 
select first name last name from some table user where id is particular id so this uh, value of a variable id is substituted here now if we passed in the value to be like this select one what happened is uh, there is a sql query inside uh, this big sql query so these are called sub selects so this select will be evaluated first and uh, the output of this query will be mm, substituted here so this will simply generate a uh, one so we'll get a one and now this query will see this one as the value of id and uh, since uh, the first name and last name corresponding to this user id is one it will uh, output admin and admin now the question is how we can use it uh, for uh, enumerating the database so mm, that's quite simple we can try to first identify the tables which are there in this um, which are there in this database so we, what we can do is we can do something like this and this is what uh, doing is we are selecting one from a table user and uh, if this table user doesn't exist uh, we'll get an error and uh, since it, it doesn't output any error we won't get anything and uh, if this user this table user exists we will get again the same thing of first name and surname admin but uh, we need to also limit we need to also limit it uh, limit this query to only only output uh, one record at a time and uh, we need this because uh, Mm. if we doesn't use this limit one what will happen is it will try to select let's say the table user have uh, 10 rows then uh, it will return uh, 10 ones to us it will return a set of 10 ones to us and uh, if we uh, this id is compared with this set of 10 ones uh, it will be false so we need to limit it to one so that we get only one record fast at a time so if we try and submit this uh, we won't get anything that means the table user does not exist so we can try something like users and we get the result that means uh, this table particular table users exist in the database and uh, we can actually make a script uh, to make our tasks faster and uh, i have made a script as well so i'm gonna show you the script first okay so we have uh, a python script for doing our tasks for enumerating the tables in the database we have this request module and then i'm just uh, getting the file name uh, which we will be using to brute force the table names against the database so i'm storing the uh, contents of the file in this variable f then i'm iterating through it then uh, this is our payload select one from and that table name and this strip is used to strip the new lines new line characters from the um, from the lines we uh, read from the word list and then we are using this limit one so it's basically similar what we did manually there so next step is i'm substituting this space with plus and this is because it's a get request and spaces are not allowed in it so we have to replace it with plus now i'm simply mm, making a get request to this url and this is the url actually so I'm just making a get request to this URL and uh, passing the header cookie so that we won't be redirected and uh, if we don't pass this 
cookie header uh, the dvwa will redirect us to the main uh, admin login page and uh, we won't be able to get the results so make sure you have this headers cookie next thing we are just doing is we are determining whether we get the response code 200 or not and if we get the 200 response code that means our query uh, uh, our http request is uh, good enough to um, get us the response and this is a uh, okay status for http queries next thing is um, we are checking for this uh, surname colon uh, keyword and if you see whenever our uh, payload uh, succeeds we get this surname colon inside the source of the response and uh, if our payload fails uh, we won't get anything so we will be using this to identify whether our payload succeeds or not and uh, we have we actually have to figure out uh, some keywords from the page source uh, that could be anything which is determining whether a payload is succeeded or not next thing is we are just printing the table names so let's just try to run it and i believe so i have this uh, um, word list tables.txt and it contains a few names of the tables which i suspect uh, that could be there so if i try to brute force to get the table names mm. we get two tables uh, okay so we get this table users exist and guest book exist and uh, if we have a long uh, word list uh, then we might get uh, um, a lot of tables but uh, this is just for demonstration so i just used a simple short uh, list so now that uh, we know the table user exists our next task is to determine whether uh, which columns are they are in this table users so we can do this uh, by using something like uh, exist so exist is a function in uh, sql which uh, returns uh, 0 or 1 depending upon whether the query is uh, successfully run or not so I'm gonna show you actually the script to do this so we have our next script uh, for doing uh, for enumerating the columns in the particular table users so just like the previous one we are just um, changing the payload and what we are doing is we are using this function called exist so sorry so we are selecting one from this table users and we know this table users exist so it will be true now we are using this uh, function exist in the mysql uh, and this will return zero or one whether uh, the query inside this which is this it returns true or not so what we are going to do is we are going to select some co column name from users and uh, limiting it to one actually i'm gonna show you here so we know the table users exist and uh, now our next task is to determine columns inside it so we know this is going to this is going to be true and will be returning something and uh, what happened
okay so this is true and is returning something now to determine the tables the columns inside it we can do the we can do something like uh, where uh, let me copy this to notepad so that you can view it where exists and uh, then a payload here select column from users okay so what's going to happen is uh, uh, it will first uh, evaluate this uh, sub query inside the complete query and uh, it will try to select the values of the column call from this table users and uh, if the column call exists uh, it will return true and uh, when it returns true we will be having uh, mm, this query the complete query to be evaluated and uh, when it is evaluated it will generate uh, simply one and uh, the value of id substituted to be 1 so if the column call exists uh, we'll get it true so if we put in here and do this we won't get anything that's because the column call does not exist so i have made a script for this and uh, we are doing the similar thing and in the place of column uh, we are replacing the contents from our word list so let's just see a simple okay so this is a simple word list and uh, this has a few records and uh, we'll be trying to um, just check whether the table whether the table users have uh, any columns from this or not so we will be running our script here and uh, let's see what happens taking a quite long okay so we got the results uh, these four uh, columns inside the table user are found so now we know uh, there exists a table users in the database we also know there exists a few columns and these are user ID first name password last name inside the table user now our next task is to um, dump the passwords of them so we will be doing it with the help of another script and i'm gonna show you the script first so this is the script and uh, in this script we are uh, using something called uh, substring and sky and uh, let me show you how this works and then it will be easier for you to understand how the script is working so we have actually this payload here and what it actually is doing so we are using a few functions here so i'm gonna evaluate if tell you how they are working one by one so first we are using a function called substring and this function how it works is it takes three arguments the first argument is a string uh, and the second argument is uh, the 
is a index of the string that means if we pass in first uh, it will use this as it will point to this as if we uh, put in two here it will point to this a and so on and uh, the next argument is the number of uh, literals we want to read that means if we pass in three it will start with this second uh, letter to a and will read three letters that means it will read it will read a d a this so it will start with two and uh, it will read up to three so that's the way uh, the function substring works and uh, how we are using this in this uh, particular example is for the for the first argument we are using a select function select function to select uh, let's say we want to dump the password so select password from the table users users limit by one and this is the way uh, we are using select function to put in dump in the password so basically uh, this will first uh, this will be evaluated first and uh, here we will be having the password corresponding and uh, we can actually use it something like this so this limit 0 1 means uh, it will limit the records to this one value and uh, it will fetch the zeroth record that means uh, just like an array will be having a, a set of records and the uh, record will have uh, a lot of uh, rows and the zero row we will be having and if we put in one here then we'll be having the first row and the second row and the so and so on so mm, this will be helpful to get uh, successive mm, rows from the record returned by the stream by the query so this will be evaluated first we'll get the password here and then we will be having the first character of the password and reading the first character and then we will be applying a uh, sky function to it so why we are applying mm, i'll tell you so let's say the password is something like uh, my strong pass so it's gonna be returned here from this substring function then we will read first character from the password first and if we put in this substring function inside this sky what we will get is uh, uh, it will be evaluated to something like sky of uh, first character from password which will be m so it will give the sky value of m and then we will compare the sky values with the numbers let's say 23 and it will be false we will go on 24 it will be false we will go on 65 and we will iterate all the numbers until we get a, a true and the moment we get true we will know that uh, okay this character is this let's say it returns uh, the first character of password is a and if we check into 97 i guess uh, sky corresponding to a is 97 let me check So if we see the sky table, the sky value corresponding to this small a is 97. That means uh, if the first character is a and um, the sky of a will return 97 and this condition will be true. So what we are doing is we are selecting one from this table users where uh, we are evaluating this entire mm, 
this entire expression and as I uh, told you here this will be evaluated like this as chi of substring of this particular thing and then uh, if it will be evaluated to true we'll get the result as we won't be getting the results so so uh, we all already know ki first name of the user id 1 is uh, admin so we just try to put in here and it will be returning true okay so we try to select one from users where this expression is true and if this expression is false uh, we won't be getting the results so this expression is true because we already know the first name corresponding to the first user id which is the first record uh, which is gonna be which is gonna be written by this query select first name from users limit 0 1 so this is the query which is gonna this is the query which is going to return this admin and we will be reading the first character which is a and is checking against 97 and this is true so we got the result and uh, if we check in for the second character if we check in for the second character we will get uh, false and that's obvious because the second character is not a so we can actually brute force it and for this i have this script so what uh, this script is doing is it i have defined a function called get care and i'm just passing the index of uh, the character which uh, i want to um, extract so i'm ranging from 30 to 126 and that is because if you see the sky table this is the sky table and the sky values above 32 in decimal have nothing so this is the decimal the second row and if you see this 32 so sql don't use uh, such characters very frequently in fact never uses them i haven't seen them to use so we are actually going to have these strings uh, in the sql queries and we uh, and we'll have it up to this value 126 so we can have only these characters even uh, we can actually make it more complex uh, by substituting different values uh, optimal values for this like we can only have a 61 to 122 for small characters we can only have 65 to this 90 for capital characters and if uh, the database is uh, having record something like uh, first name it's always gonna be a character so it won't be anything else but uh, to make it very simple i just made it to trade through all of them and uh, that's for just learning purpose and we are not going for the optimality here so again the payload is uh, pretty similar we are having this uh, sky of substring of uh, and then we are selecting first name from users and checking whether the index and if i call it with get care uh, i if i call it with get care one uh, i'll have here one and then i'll be brute forcing the first character to get the um, what actually the character is and then we are just uh, making the request and determining whether um, we get this string in it and if we get it that is uh, success so I just try to run it
and it's uh, gonna take a bit of time that is because uh, it's gonna brute force a bunch of uh, text and its complexity is quite high So until we get the results, I want to show you something else. So we are actually retrieving the um, six characters of uh, this uh, first name column. And uh, what we can try here is we can also try to get the password. So let's just put in here, try to get the passwords, first six characters of the password, Python. SQL3. So the, here the script is completed and we got uh, Gordo. That means uh, that means uh, um, the first name of uh, the user ID two is Gordo. And if we see two, it's Gordon. So we got the first five characters actually, and that's because. I iterated through 0 to 5 so that makes it to get only the 5 characters so to get the password uh, we made the script to get password and we get the 5 characters of the password of Cordo and uh, this seems to be uh, the password is actually stored in hashed and uh, Hashes are generally 32 bytes, so we'll try to get the complete hash and we'll try to get the password of uh, admin instead of Gordon. And so, to do this, we just need to make it zero here, and this zero will get the first record, and the first record is admin as we know. So, we will try to figure out the password of admin and uh, we will iterate from 1 to 32 and uh, actually 33 so uh, it will call this function get care with uh, values from 1 to 32 and uh, we will uh, evaluate this string select password from user uh, limit 0 1 and uh, it will limit the records to be return to 1 and uh, the zeroth record will be returned and in our case the zeroth record is admin so if we run it uh, we'll be able to get the password of admin and that's gonna take a bit of time and uh, as it is running we might verify whether the password returned by the string is uh, password written by the script is true or not so i'm going to make it to low and then i'm going to select the password of uh, admin to verify it's working now Okay, so for the user ID one, the password is this, and uh, we have to verify whether the password written by our script is actually correct or not. And uh, it's taking time, 
and that's because we are retrieving 32 characters and it's obvious that it will take time so we just wait and see what it returns all right so we got the we got the password here and if we see this password is uh, exactly exactly the same which is stored in the database so we got the password of admin and in the similar way we can uh, actually dump the entire database but uh, it all depends on practice because uh, blind sql that's something which uh, which really wants uh, practice and uh, you need more and more practice to figure out the ways in which you can optimize your scripts to get faster results and uh, figure out what's going wrong and uh, that's all just a matter of time so with the time you get experience you get to learn where I could be wrong uh, uh, how to optimize uh, script to get the uh, faster results and uh, so on that's it for this video thanks for watching and uh, I hope you like it and uh, if you like it please subscribe to my channel Admiral Ghost see you in the next video